you who don't know Jenny, or you haven't met Jenny yet, uh, she's originally from Beijing. She has studied at Glion Hospitality School in Switzerland, and she has spent most of her career in life working in Silicon Valley and across the United States. It was very recently that you came back to China to continue your career here across properties in mainland China, also in Japan, and now she's at the helm of this beautiful hotel. So Jenny, welcome, thank and you. thank you for being here. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. So Jenny, mm. <laughs> crisis management, hospitality oh. <laughs> and crisis management, you are no stranger mm. to handling crisis. And I thought we'd start the conversation today with you maybe giving us your definition mm. of what crisis is. All right, I think my de definition coming from the SWOT analysis. <laughs> When we do SWOT analysis, there's a threat and opportunity, right? If you write, when you write SWOT analysis, have you found when you put the items on threat, it's simultaneously it's on the other side, appears on the other side as opportunity? It's exactly how I look at crisis mm. and challenge. I like, that. <laughs> I like the mindset, Jenny, and yeah. I think, um, <laughs> That's exactly the kind of mindset that we have as hospitality leaders. Um, you, because of your work experience, you've been in the United States uh, through very severe crises, financial mm -hmm. crisis, the 9-11 crisis. Yeah. How has COVID-19 compared to those crises that you worked in in the hotels? Mm. You know, when you, when you talk about those two previous crises I've lived through, uh, I still have a very... Um, live memories about those moments. Um, however, you know, including 9-11, uh, of course, all airport closed down in the United States and hotel occupant, occupancy nationwide from average of 60% went down to below 20%. And uh, during that period of time, hotel business recovered in about a year because it's uh, only hospitality and tourism industry was heavily in, impacted not other segments of economy uh, on the market. And uh, that was the year 2001, uh, when I was a front desk manager in Opryland Hotel in Nashville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Nashville, Tennessee, Opryland Hotel is uh, very famous for its uh, Grand Ole Opry, and it's a 3,000 hotel room uh, convention center, most uh, famous convention center, one of the most famous convention center in the world. So once the, uh, the crisis hit us, you know, I immediately uh, made up my mind, I need to move out of Nashville, <laughs> Tennessee. I need to go to a most prosperous state in California, especially San Francisco. So that was the um, inspiration I received to, you know, react to the situation that has changed my life. So I spent almost 12 years in San Francisco, managed two largest Hilton hotels in San Francisco city. Um, we were running very high ADR, around 339 ADR every day, average occupancy all year long, 80 to 90 percent, because, you know, Silicon Valley business all, Oracle, Apple, and everything, just uh, once there's one event, the entire city is packed. So we never worried about business, only corporate business can fill up your hotel by 80 percent. Sounds like Shanghai. Yes, never worried about <laughs> exactly, business in exactly. Then suddenly economy crisis hit us. I remember the exact month, that was year 2007 in August. Mm -hmm. And uh, national banks starting to bankrupt in the United States. And uh, we, the occupancy went down from 80% in San Francisco drastically in over one month period went down to 30%. So we immediately running into, you know, crisis mode, of course, um, restrain our spending of the hotel and the doing everything we can like now just to stay survive. So that's one I learned, uh, the, war, the, the saying in hotel business, before you talk about living, we need to survive first. So we survived first. Uh, we survived through it. It took about a year and a half for hotel gradually going back to normal ADR, starting to show sign of uh, inclining uh, at that time. But however, it's still more, I think, yeah, it's a US-focused economic crisis affected the world, right? But the economy, in other segmentation, you still see movement and transactions. You still see hope every day. There's still people walking on the street. <laughs> you know, there's 
were still business you can do, we could do at that time. For this crisis, I think for the entire population of the world, it's the first time ever life experience. The first time ever life experience. I, I, I plan to really uh, flying back to the US at the moment of the crisis, I think in the beginning of February, but I made my decision. Hotel is still here, I need to stick to my team. I need to stay with my team. So I decided to stay through the entire crisis with the team in the month of February. It's just a shocking when you see a vibrant Shanghai city became an empty city. And uh, uh, I think everybody was lost, including myself. What is the next that we didn't know? Um, but we did everything we could. Um, we thought it was an acute situation, you know, it's a temporary. No one could think about <laughs> the current situation at that time, but we still, uh, still fought to every blood in our body. We, uh, we stick together as a team. We constantly having WeChat meetings on a weekly basis. I personally talking daily to my own company, to management company, keeping them posted about what's going on. Well, and, that, and that's exactly why I was so interested to hear mm. from you. You were one of the first hotels in Shanghai to close, close. your yes. doors. Yes, Totally yes. close operation. Yeah. I would love to know, and I think our audience would like to know, what helped you to make the decision to close mm. and then also to reopen as early as you did? You were open within the first week of April, um, the second week uh, of March, April? March, March 1st. We, uh, we temporarily suspended our operation on February 8th. We reopened on March 1st. So the primary uh, concern for us, of course, the first priority for us is the safety mm. for our guests mm. and our people. So that was the only concern that we had. We must shut down the hotel temporarily. Mm. Uh, it was a difficult decision. We had, a, a, we had to make a very quick decision. It was very tough. But, uh, but I think now I'm thinking back, it was the right decision to make. Um, um, none of our guests that were our people got infected and the hotel was uh, well secured and kept and uh, maintained by our, uh, we still have engineering team and security team safeguard the property. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yeah, it was a good experience during this period of time. Our HR team is working actively individually with our team members on a daily basis. and asking their well-being and what can we do to offer any additional help. We still have our team members got stuck in Shanghai. They couldn't go back to their hometown. They had to stay in dormitory room. And uh, as general manager, you immediately rallied the team of management team, including our HR team, to send lunch boxes to our dormitory room to make sure they have nutritious food <laughs> that provided by the hotel. and. Uh, yeah, it's just, uh, and we have a weekly meeting to catch, catch up with the XCOM member team to follow up with our line level team members. That's how we went through the month of February. Mm. Yeah. So let's talk about those meetings. Mm. I'm sure that the meetings you had with owners yes. were very different from the meetings you have with your team. Mm. And as a general manager, how do you, how do you balance communication and transparency from what the business is requiring, ownership is requiring, mm. to what you need to communicate to the lowest level line employee? You know, for me, I, it's, it's in, in the root of my belief system. Um, I always put myself in other people's shoes. If I'm an owner, owning this beautiful hotel, what is my expectation? Of course, I need to maximize profit. Yeah, return on investment. Mm -hmm. So I, as I'm a strong believer as a manager or a management company, our mission is to translate owning company's vision into reality. That's my job, mm -hmm. yeah. So even though the goal and the demand can be tough, but once I understand it is all for the good of the hotel, and ultimately, it is good for the big picture of everybody. Mm -hmm. And once we have that understanding, hotel, three parties, three part, three wins. I always talk about three wins. The win for hotel management company, 
the win for my owners and the win for the property. But the third win, it is the common goal for all of us. That's all I need to focus on. And how about yeah. the communication to your vendors mm. in this time? Because I think you know your decision to close, of mm. course, all the business has been impacted. How, as a general manager, did you manage the crisis of still maintaining the relationships with your vendors? Yeah, this is a very good question. I think um, uh, the, own, uh, the vendors were very cooperative. Uh, we were able to make special arrangement with them, delay payment, or even some of the modification on contracts and uh, to the end of April, you know, I think all companies and hotels are following this uh, same uh, same process. Um, of course, our vendors, they all also one of uh, my external customers. <laughs> uh, we always uh, maintain very positive relationships and that mutual trust between us and the suppliers. Of course, in the moment of crisis and everybody is trying to work together to just go through this, just go through this, helping each other to go through this crisis, mm. unimaginable crisis. And you have a unique position, I think also maybe with a lot of the hotel uh, hospitality employees that we have today and educational institutions here today, that you have not only a presence in China, but also mm. in the United States or abroad. Mm. Uh, Bellagio having their very famous property in Las Vegas. <laughs> yes. How did the business and the decisions being made in the United States mm. impact you in China? Mm. and maybe even impact your team morale mm. here in China. Yeah, absolutely. I think we all know all M MGM properties in Las Vegas temporarily closed. Of course, currently we are trying to, we are submitting our um, business recovery plan to the US government trying to reopen the property. Hopefully, they are targeting June, but we don't know, we will see. Um, I still remember um, before the pandemic, it was still, uh, in almost approaching the end of, uh, of January, we were celebrating the financial success we had. We exceeded budget, even in the mid of month, we have already had already exceeded budget by 1.6 million. And we have selected three outstanding leaders going to Las Vegas for three weeks training, management training. Their visa got processed, we purchased tickets, they are ready to go on March 1st. <laughs> so, once this crisis hit us, yeah, it's just uh, gone. It just, uh, everything is gone, um, of course. Um, but uh, my team, uh, my management team, we, st we believe no matter how long this crisis will last, it's still a temporary thing. Sooner or later, okay. it will, it will, it will get, we, it will, we will get done with it. I think as long as uh, it's really this pandemic, especially what I have gone through psychologically, made me realize the importance of the presence. Mm. The present moment is the most important, precious element in life. Because mm. you use the present moment to recall the past. You use the present moment to, to look forward for the future. So. We don't have anything to reference for, for you. You past experience that's not relevant. <laughs> What's going to happen next? We don't know. Mm. So what can we do at this present moment, just just to stay alive? So when you're this is what we did. When yeah. you're managing, excuse me. When you're managing the crisis, um, of course, it's the immediacy of, of the mm. situation, mm. right? Handle it now. Resolve as much as you mm. can now. What do you see as the future? Mm. for our industry as a result of this crisis and perhaps even for the future of luxury hospitality mm. in this crisis? We all know, I think uh, everybody had been talking about um, uh, the relativity uh, lately between threat and opportunity. So on a, on a stick level, you know, one end of stick is threat. You know, it's challenge. On the other end of stick is opportunity. We definitely see a big possibility and big opportunity behind this pandemic. I believe that hospitality, especially hotel industry, is going to be more resilient. We will be more creative and innovative. The talents retained or maintained in this field will be so excellent, 
so outstanding to handle crisis and to even have a better perspective to run a better business in the future. For example, you know, it's, it's, I recall for 2007 financial crisis at that time, the hotel, all business segmentation, all you see was um, leisure FIT, but leisure F F FIT was driven by direct channel from your hotel website, right? And corporate and group. At that time, OTA, Expedia, Hotels.com, Travelocity, C-Trip, no one heard of them. Even though we had very small percentage of OTA business, only open up at the last minute for Sunday night, no business. At the last minute, we cheap sold some hotel rooms. That was it, working with OTA. And, but for that time, Expedia.com, Hotels.com started to boom. They started to appear and especially starting to be not, not a competitor of other segmentation. They are the partners for hotel, for, for hotel people to run business right now. It was started from 2007 financial crisis. So immediately I realized it's going to be the same thing for this pandemic. I immediately my business stra strategy was go online. As soon as we opened in March, we did very aggressive marketing campaign at that time. No channel open, right? We use our own social platforms, WeChat. Mm -hmm. My marketing director, Kang Kang, is there. She know that she lived through with me. Mm -hmm. Every day, she's working, lead, led her team working so hard, creating WeChat moments, WeChat content on a daily basis. We use our own people to promote our hotel. It worked. When we open, we, 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 on STR report, we are running two or three or even top one of our comp set, uh, rev par index, occupancy index, and ADR in That's index when in I saw April. you in April, uh, when yeah. we came, we had lunch together in April, and we were, were busy. Full. Yes, you we were, were busy. We and were there were still many hotels that were not at even fully open yeah. hotel or yeah. restaurant yeah. venues. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a very successful strategy. Thank you. <laughs> so what else did you learn about that? What other, what other best practices did you gain from this experience of COVID-19? Um, I think definitely um, the positive, as a leader, our own circle of influence is so important. Um, that sense of belief, everything will be okay. Mm. Everything is fine. We can get through it together that re-emphasis of that positivity and hope. It's just so influential and so powerful in the moment and face of crisis for my team. Do you think that the decisions that you made as a general manager during this crisis um, may have affected your positioning in any way as a luxury hotel? Yes, I think it's still affecting luxury hotel. According to our, to our industry research, mid-scale and economy hotels are still running the highest occupancy, and luxury segmentation is still the lowest on market. So it reminds luxury hotels, we need to be more relevant. We need to be more flexible. We need to, what can we do to go out there to fight for market share? Yeah, so we're not significantly lower our ADR, but we do offer opportunities for local customers. Offered this opportunity for them. Oh, they spend less amount of money, not too much, but they can still can afford to enjoy the moment they could never thought about they could enjoy. So this, we created the unique package, packages, <laughs> uh, entice um, occupancy, it truly helped us. Uh, I think everybody has noticed that Bellagio was on, boss recommendation was on sea trip. Mm -hmm. Just in three hours, we sold 1,000 <laughs> reservations. And uh, less than one day, we had to close our inventory at 3,000 purchase. In one day, we generated 5 million RMB revenue. <laughs> As C-Trip was still trying to, you need to open up your inventory. We still have customers demanding your business. We just couldn't because we don't have the capacity anymore right. to get the business. So that's what I'm saying, just being relevant and flexible. Don't think about, oh, 
this crisis, in my perspective, maybe other industry experts had different perspective. I'm not going to gamble on cash flow. I'm not going to, oh, for the sake of brand, I want to maintain my ADR, I want to just, uh, just uh, keep up there, I, I want to sacrifice my cash flow. For me, in this moment of crisis, unit price and cash flow are the only concern for me. In order for me, for my people to have jobs, to have, to have a business to run. So, generate cash flow. <laughs> well, I think, yes, that's the principle of business. Uh, you yes. need to have the cash flow, you need to have profit. Yeah. Um, you've, you've shared so much learning that you've had as a general manager, and I'd like mm. to know, what would you do differently mm. during this crisis? Maybe a decision that you would make differently or an action that you would do differently to make you even more effective in the future crisis. Mm. I think Elibus, I told you last time, I thought it would, I really still think it's the hardest question for us because we really thought, I'm really thinking we have done everything we could to take care of people, our guests, our hotel uh, during this uh, period of uh, difficult time. But yeah, if I dig deeper, think deeper, I think um, I would hope we could have better guideline from, I must say, from higher up, uh, giving us a guideline on what to do to take care of our people, on um, um, one that we are able to resume operation, we're getting our people back to work. I think a lot of arrangement, you know, uh, for our team members were very last minute because we didn't know when they were able to come back to Shanghai, how were we able to situate them in a positive way? We, we just uh, we tried it out, it didn't work, and we had to change another approach. We had to say it was very, very time consuming. I think there can be a way that government and business entities can work together. We have a clear guidelines mm. for business in terms of um, you know, managing people more effectively mm. during the pandemic, yeah. Jenny, as you know, many people in our industry are questioning mm. the future of their career, the future of their jobs. If you can give some advice as to how they could stay inspired to mm. continue their work, what mm. would you give them? Um, I can only tell from my own personal experience. Um, I think I definitely can feel a um, sense of hopelessness, lost, you know, for everybody, especially for hospitality and hotel industry, we got hit hardest, yeah. Um, for my personal experience, when this crisis um, happened in life or in professional life, in the moment that I questioned my decision, or I questioned, did I make a right choice for my career? <laughs> I had that moment. Uh, when I went through financial crisis when I was back in San Francisco, I almost quit. But the moment, when, any, when this moment hit me, I would always calm down a little bit and recall the moment that inspired me to devote myself or to join this industry. The moment of inspiration, what had inspired you I think there was a one moment when you saw something, when you felt something, that inspiration called you to come to this industry. And for me, I think I told everybody when I was very, very young, nine years old, I was in Beijing, I was in Beijing Hotel, met with my relatives, and I was only nine years old. I really love this beautiful, elegant, beautiful people, beautiful environment. Wow, I got goosebumps in my body. I, in that moment, I just so admire people working in the hotel industry. So that was the moment, I just, I never, never uh, wavered that uh, desire. So I put myself, I got all this ed education that I needed to be successful in this industry. Just when things got tough, I always, for some reason, automatically, I always went back to the moment. I stood in the lobby that kind of sense of inspiration. So that's my advice to, to everybody is when things got tough, you think, of, you ask yourself why and purpose hmm. you're doing it. Before you do anything, ask yourself why and purpose of selecting to be part of this industry. For me, and also another motivation is 
Hospitality is an industry sharing love, sharing happiness. You want your guests feel happy and enjoyable. Yeah, and I'm the person to create that envir environment for them to feel inspired in their own terms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always something uh, motivate me because it's uh, really sharing happiness and love, our genuine care, create that memorable experience mm -hmm. and genuine care for our guests and also for our people. Genuine care even in times of crisis. Yes, it's absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Jenny. And, and we'd like to be able to open uh, questions to the audience uh, at this time, because I'm sure many people have questions for you. Uh, and very nice you meeting you. And actually, Thank you're you. one of the biggest reasons that I'm here, of course, because of Elizabeth as well, because I overlook the risk management and especially media crisis management for my group uh, for Greater China Region. So I would love to actually have a conversation with you oh, uh, yeah. regarding the media crisis management. Mm. So basically this pandemic hits our industry very hardly. And also there are so many concerns from the government, from CDC, mm. from the people, you know, outside of the hotel industry mm. and your staff. Mm. So um, I don't know whether there is there was any incident happening in this hotel, hopefully not. But in that kind of scenario, I would love to hear from a general manager Mm. So how, what is your principle of dealing with media crisis in a pandemic scenario? Of course, I think centralized the communication is the first step. Uh, once these, these crises hit us, immediately announcements need to be made to all our staff members. Do not talk to media. <laughs> Have your general manager and director of marketing to communicate to the public. Of course, as you working on crisis ma management, this field, we, we, we did receive specific guidelines on what to answer. Um, Did you get that from Bellagio, from yes, head office? Yes, MGM. Thank we you for that question. I would <laughs> love to ask that question too. <laughs> it's very, it's very systematic. <laughs> and can I have one more question? Mm. Um, actually, you mentioned as well. So when Elizabeth asked you whether there will be one more, th one thing that you would love to do in differently. So uh, from a hotel management company. Um, perspective, I would love to hear from general managers. So during this pandemic, what would you want or need most from the support center or so-called corporate office mm. uh, in terms of you know media crisis or crisis management or everything? This is a very good question, I must say, Michelle. So I need to write it down uh, so I can bring it back. Why? That's Beca my work for the coming six months. <laughs> I, because why I'm saying that? Because this crisis is so special and nobody knew what to do to react. Oh. I must say, oh, Marriott, Intercontinental, or MGM, um, it was just a pricing moment. We, we, didn't wa we didn't receive very clear. There's a general guideline, but it's not tailor-made to specific property. Sure. Our people are coming from different regions of the China. Our property is different. How am I going to take care of my guests and my people? It is very specific. So basically, our approach was, our director of HR, Shirley, she's a super lady. She's stayed very close with other director of HRs in luxury hotel in, in Shanghai. Uh, we just talked to each other intensively and uh, getting to know the best practices of different brands, and we created the most applicable, most relevant <laughs> procedures uh, for our own property. For some reason, we were always the first property to launch SOPs, what to do. And other director of HR starting to reach out to Shirley, then they starting to apply similar policies in other hotels with so, different so brands. you guys were the best practice. It's not, yeah. it, it, it's not the best, it, it's just, uh, I think because um, MGM has a small, no, right now we only have four properties in China. Corporate office, they're not very, um, very specific or structured on what, what we must do. Yeah, so we had, I must say we took advantage of freedom relative level of freedom <laughs> from corporate office that the uh, positive way to see things yeah to to do something applicable for our hotel yeah they're very understanding and uh, cooperative that we created something very unique for this hotel and they supported me mm. yeah
All right, thank you very much. You're welcome, thank Michelle. You. Hopefully I answered your question. <laughs> and thank you, I'd like to ask the question to Jenny. And um, I'm also being a part of the hospitality and uh, the duty manager in one hotel group. Welcome. Okay, welcome. so my question is then, um, during this is the particular time, as um, a lot of hotel facilities will be running the difficult time, especially for the, uh, the many the short of that. Especially a lot of the people will be getting the salary being cut off. And um, they'll make a decision even to a lot of uh, associate will be quite for this uh, industry. So my question is that as the, the top level of the government um, the management of the hospitality, how would you like to, to manage this? Because a lot of uh, basic level the staff will be felt so confused and uh, difficult to balance this because the, there's the daily life with the salary to support. And uh, the second question is, uh, I would like to answer your f answer. You need to hear your answer first. I think we are going through exactly the same thing as other hotels. Um, uh, majority, our, I think almost everybody, you know, dealing with this uh, 2,480 minimum pay. <coughs> uh, up to date, we have lost 60 talents for our hotel over this pandemic because we just couldn't sustain the, uh, going through these financial difficulties and working in hotel business. Uh, for me, as a general manager, I still need to focus on the big picture. The big picture is to control what I can control. What I can control is I need to bring cash in. I need to generate business. I need to start to have as many people as possible to coming back to work. This is the exact, exact strategy we had gone through. Uh, we, um, we had this uh, boss recommendation with C-Trip. I must say, we don't make much profit at all. Uh, it's a, in Chinese, is they are saying it must be bao kuan, which means it must be super economical that everybody can afford to stay in luxury hotel. We went for it, no profit, but at least my people can come back to work. They have hours. Gradually, I'm able to build up the morale and confidence in the hotel and starting to make buzz in market. Oh, what's going on at the Bellagio? You know, people like to gather, right? Once the market's getting eased up a little bit, and once they see the most active hotel, and it will attract more people. That's all I did. Just look at the moment. What can I do to bring more cash flow? I told Elizabeth not long ago that for the month of February, we look at our cash flow. Oh, we even couldn't sustain until the end of March, we, couldn't, we didn't even have cash to pay for our employees. Okay, no cash flow. Then we need to, we, for the month of, uh, for the month of uh, March, we, m we made almost two million. Okay, give, give me some, some cash, that's good. So we were able to, some cash reserve, we were able to survive through April, and now we were able to through, say, uh, survive through May, and now we have very positive cash flow to survive. We are not even talking about survival, we are talking about break even for this current month. So this is, this is what I'm talking about, just a, just to stay focused. And you can only save at some people that you can. And other people, they have different preferences or aspirations that you cannot help. Yeah. But I need to focus all my energy on things that I can control, I can save. And yeah. The following question is that you just also mentioned about uh, and the Sutrip and the other OTA the corporation also to contact your hotel and uh, like you to open more inventory to open the business and you're also talking about uh, the capacity will be not allowed to you to accept more businesses. So that's our questions. Because the, in view of the right decision, uh, a lot of hotel will not have um, enough money to support because a lot of hotel will not allow the part-time part to operating and not to 
uh, hire new people. Yes. So in right now, only the person in your hands, how could you to handle this situation to bring more cash in and uh, to get more business and then balance to keep and maintain your high-end service? Very good question. I must say, lateral service. <laughs> <laughs> we know lateral service. Lateral service from sales and marketing, from finance, from human resources, including myself and my secretary, were running in the restaurants, cleaning dishes, bussing tables. That's what we did. Every department, we have a very specific schedule from heart of the house department mm -hmm. to, to put them on schedule to support restaurants. Our Chinese restaurant run full. We, we, you know, we couldn't even had time to call part-time. It's just all letter service. You said something we, before, Jenny. You said when crisis management, the message has to be, we're in this together. Mm, exactly, right. teamwork. Yeah, so it's all letter service. Uh, we manage it through, and now we, because uh, some of our uh, staff members still stuck back in their hometown, now they are starting. We starting to call them back. They are calling. They are coming back, but we still need more more manpower. We are starting. We are planning to recruit 15 trainees to help us out. We're still having this uh, lateral service going on intensively in our restaurants. <laughs> A director of uh, food and beverage, his secretary, everybody. We just uh, doing as much as we can to support operations, stripping beds, everything. Have your That's guests given you any feedback about service? Because I think also mm -hmm. he was questioning. You're a luxury hotel, mm. and you're doing very reduced staffed, and mm -hmm. you have housekeepers busting tables, mm. uh, and some people from the front doing rooms. Has that impacted the guest experience or feedback from your guests? Very good question. You need to be very strategic and well-planned in advance. For example, your restaurant servers or your food and beverage people need to stay at the front of house to focus on customer service. All the lateral service are supporting tasks. You know, we polishing, we doing everything else that we could we could help. So yeah, I I didn't see any major impact on service level at all, because everybody for food and beverage we had sufficient people just to focus on customers and everything else being done by us. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.